Hello everyone, name is Luke Ripa and welcome back to Wicos. Today I'm going to talk about David Fincher's The Killer, coming out to select theaters at the end of October and then finally releasing on Netflix on November 10th. The film is a killer played by Michael Fassbender, who lives by a very strict set of rules and one big mantra, do not give a fuck. However, after he fatally misses a target, the client who hired him decides to punish him, but uh, instead of punishing him, punishes him his wife. From that point on, the protagonist starts an international manhunt trying to figure out who's the client who decided to punish him, put into test his very mantra that he doesn't give a fuck. So the killer could be best described as a bare minimum movie. Right from the beginning, the movie opens with the fastest opening credits I've ever seen. The names don't stay up for more than two seconds, they go quickly by and then the movie starts. The best way to describe this movie, aside from being, again, a bare minimum movie, is that it's a Kill Bill without exposition. The only thing that is exposed is the current thoughts the character is thinking throughout the movie. The story is linear, there are no time jumps, aside from traveling, of course, because again, it's an international manhunt. The first chapter is very slow as it shows how he operates, making you crave the moment when he pulls the trigger. After that, the movie becomes very fast-paced, with absolutely no shenanigans, he constantly goes from one point to another point to unravel this sort of case, and during that, he kills key people. The ending, it's very surprising, I of course not gonna spoil it, it's almost anticlimactic, but it's very fitting to the movie. Everything again in the movie is bare minimum, Michael Fassbender is the absolute protagonist of the movie, and the only character who's on the screen for more than 5 minutes, and he is perfect in the role. I am not going to be surprised if he gets a nomination for Best Lead and next year's Oscars. Even the editing, the film was edited by Kurt Baxter, is very fast-paced with very good transitions. The movie is scored by, once again, for film by Trent Reznor at Atticus Ross, although in this case it is very minimal. There are quite a bit of songs, but the soundtrack is present exactly where it needs to be, otherwise the silence takes over, which is a great choice, I think, for the type of movie that this is. And the movie benefits a lot from Fincher's direction, who wastes no time and constantly takes advantage of the fact the entire narrative is presented by the killer's point of view. I know that it feels I should talk more about this movie, but really there is not much to talk about, otherwise I get into spoilers, which I think that I did not do it, although at the same time it feels like I did it, because again, it's a very minimum story. Also, I wore a Popeye shirt for this review for a very good reason, but you will have to see the movie to understand why. And if you do, write the answer down in the comments. Overall, how much I scored the killer? It's gonna be a surprise for you because again, this review is gonna be shorter than usual, but I give the film a very solid 9 out of 10. A great film with great filmmaking and despite being very, very minimum story, and I am a story guy mostly, the filmmaking completely takes advantage of that, making the movie great exactly because of that. Anyway, Anyways, thank you so much for watching. Did you watch The Killer already at festivals or are you gonna watch it when it drops on Netflix? Let me know down in the comments. If you liked the video, leave a like and be sure to subscribe to Wicos to enjoy more content about movies, TV shows, anime, books, gaming and board games. Wicos is on all major platforms, namely YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, X and Twitch. Anyways, thank you so much for watching this video. My name is Luca Ripa and I'll see you next time.